What if I told you that the most important skill in tech today isn't learning a new programming language or even mastering AI developer tools? It's understanding how everything fits together. It's knowing how the code you write connects to other systems, how it moves data, helps real users, and ultimately supports the goals of the products and the business. That skill is called systems thinking, and it's quickly becoming one of the most in-demand abilities across software engineering, machine learning, and tech in general. So in this video, we're going to break down what systems thinking is, why it matters, and how to start developing it today. So let's get into it. So what exactly is systems thinking? Think back to when you first learned math as a kid. You started with something super simple. 3 plus 2 equals 5. As you got older, things got more complex. Suddenly, you were solving equations like 4x plus 3 equals 31. Solve for x. Then eventually, you reached calculus. All that arithmetic, geometry, algebra, and trigonometry came together. They weren't separate anymore. You used shapes, rates of change, and functions all at once. And that's when it finally clicked. Math isn't just a bunch of isolated topics, it's one connected system. That's exactly what systems thinking is in software. You might know how to code or create an API call. Maybe you've played with Git or you've seen how HTTP requests work. But that's all still algebra level. Systems thinking is the calculus of engineering. The moment when all of those pieces don't feel separate anymore and you understand how they come together. It's the shift from, I know how this part works, to I know how this part fits into the entire system. And that's what we're mostly going to focus on today. Let's walk through a simple example of what systems thinking looks like. Imagine we're building software for a grocery store. We start small. We write a shopping cart class that can add items, remove items, and also view items. Think of it like a tiny API. But here's where the systems thinking begins. If only one person was using the app, we could store all of their items in memory, maybe in a list or a hash map. But what happens when hundreds or thousands of customers wanna store items at the same time? We'd need something that can scale. So we'd store items in a database. Now we have a shopping cart service and a database with tables for the user's items and also the store items. But here's another problem. Customers don't know how to make raw API calls or write HTTP requests. They wanna be able to just click on a button and add something to their cart. So we need a client, a website, or a mobile app. This lets people interact with the API very easily without having to understand any code. So now our system has a client for users, a shopping cart API or service, and a database. Eventually, we might need to consider caching frequently used items, using authentication or authorization for user login and role-based auth, or even building a firewall to stop malicious actors from storing or removing data. Do you see what's happening here? We started with a single class, but by asking questions about what real users wanted, we started uncovering more and more parts of the system. And every part of the system emerged from what does the customer need? And there are way more complicated systems out there today. This was just a small example to get your feet wet with systems thinking. But at the end of the day, systems thinking is a lot more user driven or product driven than people think. Because building great software is really about serving your audience. And speaking of serving people in the software space, I wanted to introduce you to today's sponsor, FreePick. FreePick is an all-in-one creative AI suite for image, video, music, and design templates. So let's say I wanted to create an image for some B-roll in my videos. I want it to be something like a person sitting on their desk or on the couch and coding on their laptop. So we're going to go ahead and actually grab one of my old thumbnails and use it to generate this image. Okay, so we're going to pick this thumbnail, the Learn Python video, that has some text that I want to remove, and then it also doesn't show me sitting at a desk, so we want to change that. So I'll say remove the text and make it seem like I'm sitting at a desk coding and this is the final result so now i'm going to take that image that we just generated and make a video out of it this is my favorite part and then you click on the video generator tab and you upload whatever reference image that you want so i'm uploading this reference image you also get a generated prompt from free pick i'm going to remove this second part of the paragraph and add more about me coding or trying to push something to production and being excited about that then i'm also going to change the model and i'm going to actually go for google vo3 so it's pretty cool 
Well, it's crazy to see this image get turned into me actually being enthusiastic and typing. And so I'll show you that. I'm gonna use a stock photo to just show you how that translates to a video as well. Okay, so I'm gonna say that I want this woman to drop the sheet to reveal her face and the wind is blowing and then it starts raining. Yeah, so pretty cool results. It looks super realistic. And again, this is using a stock photo. So I'd recommend using a real photo so that you can use as a reference to create this image. The cool thing about FreePic is that it doesn't matter if you're a beginner or an expert engineer. There are accessibility options for both. I've included a link in the description below. Okay, now back to the video. So as you might imagine, system design goes way beyond just an API web app and a database. Every real system looks different and each one comes with its own challenges. At the simplest level, systems thinking starts with the basics. So you have to understand how your repo is structured, how your API is designed and how clients communicate with it, whether that's HTTP, WebSockets, message queue systems, etc. A lot of this you learn by doing, but another huge part is just exposure. So you can actually actually see how real systems are built. It's kind of like building a house. There are standards to frame walls, run plumbing, and wire electricity, but every house is still unique. You have to understand both the rules and the trade-offs. One of the most common systems question is, should I use a relational database or NoSQL? Relational databases store structured data, like a spreadsheet with fixed columns. NoSQL stores unstructured or semi-structured data. It's data that doesn't really fit into one shape. So for example, if you're storing resumes, every applicant might have different layouts, formats, or fields. There's not really a single structure that fits all of these things. So in this case, NoSQL is the better choice. On the other hand, if you're storing like payments or orders where the fields are very predictable and the relationships matter, then SQL probably makes more sense in your situation. There's no universal answer. It's really a best fit based on your use case. The same thing goes with authentication or authorization. Some users might need access to admin features like updating prices or changing inventory. Other users, like just regular customers, they should only be able to add or remove items from their own cart. So you want to make sure that they don't get too privileged of an access to do something that they're not allowed to do. And none of this is about writing a shopping cart anymore. It's about thinking about the entire system experience end to end. Okay, so where do you learn all of this information? A great resource that I recommend is Hello Interview. They walk you through real design problems like building Tinder or a web crawler and they explain the thought process step by step. And no, this isn't sponsored. I wish they would sponsor me because I really like their platform, but We'll see. Comment if you think they should. These kinds of breakdowns help you think like an actual systems engineer. Because ultimately, you should be asking questions like, how do users interact with the product? Where does the data get stored? How does the data move between services? What are the bottlenecks? Should we cache things? Do we need indexing? And how do we scale this if we get more and more users over time? That's systems thinking. At the end of the day, the most important pieces are how data flows and how the user interacts with the system. Everything else, caching, concurrency, load balancing, is just an optimization layer on top. Once you understand the flow, the rest of it becomes very easy. So if you like this video, let me know if you want a part three, a deep dive into how to actually build these systems using AI. That's the next piece of the puzzle. And if you're interested in learning about how to begin coding and understanding really deep concepts like memory management in the RAM, or even understanding what a heap or a stack is, or even just data structures and algorithms in general, I have these two videos ready for you guys to watch. So definitely check it out. Happy learning. Thank you.